Aloha, everyone, and welcome back to Hawaii, the state of clean energy on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host today, Mitch Yuan, and today on our show, we've got a great show, we'll be getting an update on the PGV geothermal plant after it was shut down because of the Kilauea eruption with our guests, Mike Kalikini of Puna Geothermal Venture and Richard Ha of Sustainable Energy Hawaii. Welcome, Mike and Richard. Thank you. So Richard, aloha. aloha. So let me start with you, Richard. I, I wanna set the context of how important geothermal is for Hawaii being able to meet its clean energy objectives. So can you give us an overview of why geothermal is so important uh, for us here in Hawaii? Uh, yeah, you know, I've been involved in uh, energy issues for more than 10 years and, and really quite, quite involved in it. Uh, the big deal is that uh, the world has passed uh, the peak of fossil fuel. You know, the, uh, the, the, the critical people, you know, that we look at think that this happened in 2018. So we'll be coming down the backside of the, the uh, oil supply curve. Right. And that is pretty, pretty uh, worrisome. The other thing is we happen to be 1% of the whole world who have geothermal at their location. So we're really lucky we have it here. And that's the real reason why we need to uh, get on it and, and, and get it done. That's great. So Mike, you're on the spot now. So why don't you uh, go through the history of uh, PGV and how we got to where we are today and all the good work you guys have done to rescue the geothermal plant from that terrible eruption, which is a miracle that you guys are still there. So. Go ahead, over to you, Mike. Tell us, uh, tell us about PGV and, and your projects. Thank you, Mitch. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, Puna Geothermal uh, started, uh, commenced commercial operations back in 1993 as a 25 megawatt facility. And um, it was soon evident, it was early on that the resource here was stronger than anticipated. So we increased our contract and our output to 30 megawatts two years later in 1995. Um, and then it, it wasn't until 2012 where we did another increase, an additional eight megawatts. So it took us to 38 megawatts and that's our current uh, contractor out, output levels today, right? So, you know, go, and, and we cannot, we, we gotta mention uh, prior to PGV, there was the Hawaii Geothermal the HGPA project that the state ran and you know, improved the viability of geothermal as an energy um, uh, generator. And it was a three megawatt facility. It operated for about six years, I believe. So that was the precursor to Puna Geothermal Venture. And um, so we've been online um, since 1993. Like I said, we have a, a power purchase agreement with Hawaii Electric Light. And of course, um, in 2018 in May, the uh, Lower East Rift, the Kilauea eruption started. Of course, you know, I, I'm certain most folks know that that um, the, the Kilauea eruption was really started in 83. It just didn't come down the Lower East Rift zone where we're we are located, right? right? So um, what had happened is uh, we shut down. Um, we executed and implemented and activated our emergency response plan. Uh, and then we coordinated with civil defense, with the state, uh, civil defense folks, county civil defense. And uh, since then, we, we were shut down. Here's an update of what it looks like today. If you look above the letter E in venture, that is uh, Fisher 8. You know, it's formerly now known as Ahu Ailaau. Uh, that one uh, flowed to the northeast of us. And most of the other fissures uh, flow to, to the uh, west of us, the west and south. But uh, this website is, um, can be visited. It does have updates, weekly updates. It has a few videos of the, of the project today. Next slide, please. Uh, this one here is the roadway that we, we built to get back on. Um, the river you see in front of us, you can see the cliffs just below the two green structures. That was the river flow path of Fisher 8 that went down to the ocean. 
<clears throat> and so to the left of this picture is Hilo, to the right is Kalapana. And uh, so we rebuilt the road and started that in December of 2018. The eruption stopped in early August, but it was still hot, a lot of residual heat. And, and you can see on the top where most of the other fissures flowed south of us. Uh, this one is looking from the east towards Mauka. Kilauea is on, on the top. And, and this is, you can see the lava surrounding us on both sides. And you can see there's a rig there. We're doing work on our well field. And you can, you can see that the, the plant is, was situated on purpose at a higher elevation. And, um, you know, in anticipation that there would be a lava inundation. Um, historically, there was a flow on the rift zone. The most recent one was 1960. 1960. Prior to that, it was 55. And before that, there were several other in modern in our modern history. So the rift zone, Kilauea is active. Um, you know, scientists tell us uh, we'll be over this hotspot for at least uh, over a million years. So it's not, uh, yeah. If it's going to erupt again, it's just when, right? And right. Uh, you know, so we, we've learned quite a bit uh, from this event. Uh, we had to shut down and, and rebuild, and there's a lot of work. And uh, finally, was able uh, to to come back online in uh, November of 2020. And um, next slide. It's just a, a quick shot of some of our employees on the rig. Next slide, yes. Oh, this is like uh, the rig on the left and the rig on the right uh, from an aerial shot. So just briefly, we talked about this, you know, how we, how we situated the location of the, the major portions of the power plant. Um, and, and basically we followed the emergency response plans that we have and, and um, we're able to recover yeah, everything there's a couple more that work that's still in in uh, in process, but there's being back online is a huge is a huge accomplishment. So uh, another photo from the uh, east looking down. So this is like a before and after a Google shot. And I thought it was pretty interesting. You look on the left, uh, you can see that that we are PGB is up uh, right there by the word before on the upper left corner. So. Just for perspective, our, our area is, the facility uses up about 40 acres. We're on 800 acres of lease land, but we're about 40 acres. And then if you look to the right, you can see how the lava just uh, surrounded us. So we're surrounded by lava right there. And so, um, yes, Mitch. So how, so how close is the nearest house now? Or the nearest, uh, you know, where people are, are living right now? It looks like all those right. houses got wiped out. The ones uh, to the south of us is Lani Puna Gardens. They, they, the majority of those folks here yeah, got covered. Now, to, to the immediate east of us, the folks along the ridge that we're on, there were at least uh, you know 30 or 40 homes that, that were spared also because the lava were on both sides. Right. These were the folks that when we built our road to go back in, we, we bulldozed a side road so that everyone could go in ahead of you know the county uh, re rebuilding the, the Kapoho Road. So we were able to help those folks out. And in addition, Helco was also able to use our, our, local, our roadway and our easements to get uh, power back to the folks in there. Yeah. So it was a win-win so, for everyone. So in a previous uh, presentation you gave uh, recently, you talked about how or ORMAT supported your employees. Could you tell us about that? Yeah, good point. You know, within days of the start of the eruption, ORMAT CEO and senior executives uh, flew to Hawaii, um, gathered everyone for an all hands meeting and said, look, folks, we're gonna keep all of you at least one year. We don't know what's gonna happen with this eruption, but we're just committed to keeping all of you. And, um, you know, and, and so that said a lot for ORMAT, um, you know, and, and everyone was like super happy. At least we, we had some sense of what's going to go on because, you know, it was, it was a scary, scary moment when the eruption first started. <laughs> uh, a lot of uncertainties, right? And, um, and so that commitment from the CEO of ORMAT really went a long way 
And uh, again, fortunately, the, the eruption stopped in early August. But in the meantime, all of our all of our employees um, were taking turns volunteering in the community at the hub in Pahoa. Uh, we're donating supplies to help out folks in need. Uh, we also uh, volunteered some of our employees with the American Red Cross. Right. You know, and yeah, so uh, we we really uh, I mean, Ormat, I in my opinion, uh, really stepped up and you know and helped out as much as we could. We well, also how many, kept, how, many, how many employees do you have? We have 32, 32. Okay. Yeah, at the time we were at around 30, maybe 31. Um, we did not, you know, Format and PGB, you know, said, if, if you don't want to stay on, it's fine. One, I think one person left uh, right. voluntarily. They wanted to move back to Kona. But otherwise, right. every, everyone stayed on board. So did any of your employees lose houses in this uh, event, or we did actually? We did. We lost two two employees, uh, Leilani, and in Kapoho. Yeah, it was unfortunate, but um, yeah, our folks got impacted just like you know, all the rest did. Just like everybody else, yeah. Just like everybody else, yeah. yeah. Right. So yeah, uh, so we came back online in November. Like I said, today we're at about seventeen megawatts. Our contract is thirty eight. We've been fluctuating between 15 and almost 25, uh, still doing some testing and some uh, adjustments to equipment. But the plan ultimately is to get back to 38. And so we're continuing to gradually increase our output. Uh, just another aerial kind of pan view. It, it, I like the bottom one. Well, I like them both, but you can really see how all the lava is around us, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. I'd like to say it's a miracle, but you know, you and I talked about how you selected the site and you planned for this. Uh, you know, I'm sure uh, there's there's miracle is involved also. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're so lucky and appreciative and fortunate. Yeah, so that's where we're at today. Um, <clears throat> that's what's happening at, at at PGB, and you know, we're still uh, working uh, working on getting back to uh, full capacity. So what kind of challenges are you experiencing right now that um, you want to tell us about? Well, uh, you know, the biggest, yeah. You so, can talk about your power purchase agreement and, you know. Well, uh, going back, uh, the, the some of the challenges was just, just getting the road completed. I mean, yeah. going back, you know, the first, <clears throat> I think the first big milestone for us in the restoration and recovery was getting that road in. Right. Uh, it took a lot of effort, permitting, et cetera, some safety requirements, but we did it. And then uh, it was a big deal <laughs> to be able to drive back on location. Uh, prior to that, we would fly in because there's there's no other safer way. Um, that was a challenge. And then, of course, uh, getting the transmission lines built again because we had to right. go through the Public Utilities Commission. Right. Um, so we, we went through the process. It's primarily Hawaiian Electric, but you know we're, we're supportive of, of that. But we, we need the transmission lines. Um, we wanted to start back up because the current project, PGV, our contract uh, goes is still valid all the way till the end of 2027. That's it. Right? And we kept all of our other permits uh, up to speed and, and ready to go in anticipation of starting up when we did. You know, so we're still going through. Um, we're going through some renewals on the, the Department of Health air permit, also with the underground injection control with the EPA. But that's the normal process. Uh, it's taking a little bit longer than, than it would. It's amazing because uh, we're in the process of renewing the permit. Um, there was a contested case hearing request, and it just coincided with the contested case hearings at Mauna Kea. So ours got delayed. And then... Uh, we're getting ready to do the, the hearing again, and then the eruption started. So then yeah, we delayed again, and then the eruption is done. We're here again, and then we get the pandemic, right? So I, I don't know <laughs> if there's going to be anything else, but uh, it's been, I can tell you, it's been exciting. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I also understand you've taken the opportunity to upgrade some of your equipment, so which is going to make life easier and reduce noise uh, signatures and all that kind of stuff. Do you want to? Talk to us a little bit about that. Sure, sure. So uh, 
We are in the process. Um, there's a proposal at the PUC uh, for an amended and restated power purchase agreement. Right. And um, um, by the way, this is something that PGB and ORMAT was working on even prior to the eruption. So all along, um, we had this initiative because you know the existing power purchase agreement terminates at the end of 2027. We have this RPS goal of 100% by 2045. We wanted to start moving the process along to extend, you know, so that we can, uh, you know, participate and, and continue on our operations. So the amended and restated power purchase agreement was submitted by Hawaiian Electric, HELCO, to the PUC at the end of 2019. The four, <clears throat> the four key elements of this proposal is one, we would blend the two existing power purchase agreement into one single uh, comprehensive power purchase agreement. Um, in addition, it would extend the term so that the facility can operate uh, till 2052. Right. Um, it would delink all pricing from oil. And then ultimately, as you mentioned, uh, it would allow for a repowering of the project, meaning we would install three new, much more efficient generating units and replacing the 12 generating units that we have today. And, and like you mentioned, because you have less rotating equipment, noise will be reduced substantially. The piping connections, which flanges and valves also are reduced substantially, thus yeah, reducing the potential for geothermal emissions. So it's, it's like, a, you know, all around it's this, and the pricing dealing from oil is going to be the lowest uh, energy rates for our um, our facility <clears throat> and um, we're just uh we're going through the process at the pc right now there's going through the steps uh to see what we can do about getting uh getting approval on the ppa so uh when you're back up and running to your full power that you want to own what what what's the percentage of the Big Island's electricity that's uh, yep. supplied by PGB. Yeah, you know, good, good question. Uh, prior to the eruption, we were contributing 31% of all energy uh, supplied to the grid, right. and and uh, uh, Hawaii Island, of course, was over 60, almost 60% in 2018, leading right. all the different colonies <clears throat> in terms of renewable, and we were we were the 31 of the of the 60%. It was actually 57, I believe, back then. But that's uh, that, that's at 38 megawatts. And you know, one thing I did not mention is that the proposal with the three new units will utilize the same geothermal resource that the 38 megawatt facility today utilizes, but because of improved efficiencies, it'll result in an eight megawatt increase. So it'll go up to 46 megawatts. Okay. So we're looking at closer to almost 40% renewable contribution once we, once we can get there. So I was talking to somebody from Helco not that long ago, and they said, like, during the day when, you know, with the wind's really going and the sun's out and geothermal is up and running, we're about 80, 83% renewable on the big island. Right. Drops down at night when to around, I thought he said around 55 or something like that percent. Because uh, you know the sun's not shining and uh, whatever, it's mainly because of the sun. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty uh, significant contribution to our goals of uh, getting to um, you know this hundred percent renewable by twenty forty five. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you, you know, there's some uh, proposals um, that, that's out there for additional solar and, and energy storage that's looking to come online. Right, right. So Richard, uh, how about jumping in and uh, talking a little bit more about uh, uh, geothermal and, and its uh, you know value to the Big Island? And uh, maybe uh, let's talk about sustainable energy Hawaii and uh, you know what what you're all about there and how you, how we can support geothermal. Uh, you know, sustainable energy Hawaii uh, entered the the docket. Um, so a year ago, January, right? 
during that time, we, we uh, said that uh, there was a question and the question was, well, essentially they were asking, how come you folks are, are wanting to participate when the consumer advocate can take care of your issue? What we told them was, we come at it from a different point of view. Uh, we come at it from a biophysical economic point of view, which is basically physical science and ecology. So, so as opposed to you know economics from a um, uh, social science point of view, we're looking at a science point of view. And what that does is it allows us to to to, to project into the future and quantify uh, stuff more accurately. So that's why we entered. And uh, so we've been uh, participating, and that's what uh, SC Sustainable Energy Hawaii is doing. So the main big thing that is on our minds is the fact that most people don't realize, you know, we know about climate change, that's coming. But uh, right alongside is the decline of fossil fuel. Right. And we happen to have geothermal, and we want to, you know, uh, move it forward as fast as we can. Because we, we 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 really don't have that much time that we think we have. So so that that's our interest. So so we've seen uh, on the mainland just in the last week what happens when your oil supply is disrupted. Hmm. So you want to talk about that a little bit? Well, I'll put you on the spot. You know that pipeline that got hacked yeah. by the Ruskies, or. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and, and that's a good point because you, you see right now, uh, PGP is located on the East Grip Zone and we right. need more geothermal. Right. It'd be smart of us to diversify so that we don't get caught like, like what happened on the East Coast. Yeah, spread out right. of this. Because there's a geothermal uh, uh, resort uh, on, on the other side of the island, all the way from South Point, all the way to Monotheo, the base, there's a lot of places. But I did want to mention something real, real uh, important. And that is we have at the University of Hawaii has this uh, 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 organization called the Hawaii Groundwater and Geothermal Resource Center. Yeah. And they're vastly underused because if you think about it, what can be more important than water and geothermal? Yeah, right. so, so, so it should be funded yeah more aggressively. You know, we should have, we should by now have had uh, tested wells ready to go. We don't have one. You know, so, yeah. so that, that's our, our, you know, that's what we want to do, yes. Well, I love uh, geothermal because originally I was going to install an electrolyzer at the, at the geothermal plant. I like it because it's 24 seven base load power. So, you know, you're, as the uh, you know the uh, financial locks like to say you know it's it's great capital utilization, and uh, we went through uh, you know quite a long uh, process to get it approved, but we did, and no sooner were we we were ready to sign the we were ready to sign the deal, is when we had that eruption in 2014. Remember that when it came. Uh, 2015, got, yeah, yeah, yeah. 2015, and it got really close to coming uh, through to Pahoa. It was like you know, 100 yards away from the main road. So yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, from the point of view of my projects, you know, that's the and, and for Hawaii, it's not just my projects, it's for Hawaii is being able to have that resource, and to use any kind of extra energy to, uh, to make hydrogen instead of curtailing it, which is really wasting electrons. So um, that's, a, that's a that's a big deal for for me for me. And you know, Mitch, to 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 add on to that, um, you know, PGB and ORMAT, uh, we are, you know, definitely would be interested in, in in pursuing that again, once the moment is 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 the best time, right? You know, <laughs> I mean, like you said, we, we we're ready to sign off on the agreement. We're going to do that that test uh, that that project, and and then yeah, the eruption came in crazy. Yeah, but little did, yeah, little did we know that was just the teaser, right? <laughs> yeah, the big one was sitting <laughs> up there waiting to, waiting to let it rip. Mitch, right. you know, I'd like to add one more thing. Yeah, uh, please. And that is, you know, one thing that we can do is set up something like what they have in Iceland. Iceland has a geothermal 
uh, resource fund where yeah. where you know where people can come in uh, and want to do a project, they can uh, borrow money from that fund, and if they're successful, they get to pay it off in twenty years or whatever it is. If they're unsuccessful, they write it off. So there's very little risk for them. It's, it, they they already know what's going on. Yeah. So we can do the same thing in uh, uh, on this island. Set a geothermal resource evaluation fund in the county right. and use it as a receptacle for the uh, grants and, and private funding, right. uh, you know, all, all that kind of stuff. And, and, and uh, you know, the, the geothermal pays the royalty. That royalty is not used for anything to, to develop geothermal. So how much money is that? I mean, what, what kind of level of funding is that? Is the is the royalty stream, you know, approximately you know, round numbers? Yeah, it's it's a, a few million dollars annually at full full contract. Like yeah. for example, yeah, 2018, it was probably uh, around two and a half million dollars. And how is that split up? I mean, some of it goes so the, to all. The, 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 yes, the state uh, the state retains 50% because the state has uh, claims to the mineral rights yeah, for geothermal. And then uh, Office of Hawaiian Affairs gets uh, 30% and 20% is to the County of Hawaii. Okay. Well, it sounds like that's uh, something we should be looking at. So I like that idea, Richard. So that's something Sustainable Energy Hawaii could uh, be pushing. Yeah. yeah. So believe it or not, guys, we've uh, almost gone through our whole <laughs> half hour here. And uh, so I think we it's uh, time for me to uh, sign off. But I, I'd like to uh, thank Mike for coming here and giving us great, awesome photographs. Man, I, I was uh, blown away by, by your new photographs. Uh, they're really, really beautiful. And, uh, thank so, and thank you for all you're doing uh, to help us get to our, our renewable energy goals. And thank you, Richard, for all you do with Sustainable Energy Hawaii and the whole Sustainable Energy Hawaii team. And uh, so this is Mitch Ewan signing off, and I'll see you next week with, with Hawaii, the state of clean energy.